What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hexshot and thank you guys for joining us for today's review on the Ruger SP-101 model 5719. Excited to bring this gun to you. This one has been a while in the making. Three or four months now that we've had this gun. Uh, we've taken it out on four separate occasions and we wanted to make sure we knew, first of all, how to shoot this gun. Everything that I think you guys would want to know about this gun. And the main question for this video really is, the, is the Ruger and revolvers in general still a viable option in 2019? That's what we want to focus on. So today we're going to talk about pros and cons, the SP-101, the features, uh, everything that you need to know about it. We're of course going to show you uh, shooting and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, this is our first Patreon selected gun, so it's pretty special for us. Uh, if you haven't checked out our updated Patreon, we have made it a lot more personal. And uh, you guys got to choose this specific guns and many more in the future. So please come over and check us out on Patreon. If you don't see your name at the end of the video, uh, make sure to become a power patron. And uh, your name will be included in each and every video. Uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, I'm going to put that to the side. You're going to get the manual. This is going to tell you, you know, your parts in the gun, what you should, what you should not do, how to adjust sights if you have an adjustable sight. Um, option, mainspring housing, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, really, really nice manual there. And then uh, the gun. All right, this is what you paid for. All right, so let's get it, the box out of the way here. And let's talk about the gun. We're also going to talk a little bit about the history of Ruger because it it's very fascinating to me. So um, let's go ahead and get started with specs here really quick. So this is the model 5719, chambered in 357 Magnum. Uh, capacity, of course, you have a five-shot cylinder. Uh, the overall length on this one is eight inches. Uh, the barrel length is three inches. You have a couple different options if you go with an SP-101. Uh, 4.2 inch option, two and a quarter inch option. Uh, as far as calibers, you have nine nine mm. You have 357 Magnum, of course. Uh, 22 LR, 38, 327 Federal Magnum. You have options if you want to go with an SP 101. That's for sure. Unloaded weight is 27 ounces. Uh, it is stainless steel and uh, kind of has like a satin finish over the stainless steel, which is really nice. Uh, MSRP is 719 on these guns, obviously finding them online, even Sportsman's Guide, wherever you go, uh, it's going to be cheaper than that for sure. Uh, let's go around the gun. So you can see right here, you have a full lug. You can see your crane and your ejector rod, where that goes right there. There's your ejector rod. This one is dirty. We've shot some rounds through this thing. Cylinder. All right. Nice cylinder. You can see your locking lugs right there. And then your main locking lug right there. Now this one actually has a triple locking cylinder. So front, rear, and bottom. Top, bottom, rear. All right, locking. So you have really nice lockup. You can see this one's locked up. Very minimal cylinder movement, which is nice. Rounded off trigger guard. This is a double action and single action revolver. Okay, so we'll show you the trigger and everything after the shooting part of the review. But... Uh, Double action and single action, and then this is a push button style, almost like a mag release for your cylinder there. Okay. All right, integrated rear sight. Show you the sight picture, how it comes from the factory, at least this one. Now, on some models of the SP 101, you have the uh, adjustable rear sight, uh, fiber optic front sight. Of course, when it comes to accessories with the SP 101, you can pretty much get whatever you want. You can see SP-101, 357 Magnum. The front sight is pinned, so you can easily change that out if you don't like this one. If this were my gun, I'd probably do that. And then your uh, your grip screw right there, so you can take these grips off, put different grips or whatever you want. The grips themselves, the backing, all right, the back strap is rubber, and then it's got a plastic insert in the middle, all right? It's not exposed in the rear, which is nice, especially with 357 Magnum. And then you can also get a hardwood option in here if you like. Something a little bit more traditional. Which I actually think looks pretty awesome. I looked at pictures of it and it looks good. Alright, and then a couple more things to note. You don't need any kind of special tools or anything to break this gun down. I'm going to do a simple breakdown. I'm not going to break this gun all the way down. But I do I at least want to show you what the inside of the grip frame and all that looks like. And then, uh, and then you do have a transfer bar 
safety. So I kind of pull that down. Mrs. Hexshot will try to show you right in here. You can see your transfer bar. Try to show you again. This transfer bar comes up just like that. And then you can see your notch right there for your transfer bar. All right, so totally safe to carry this one fully loaded. All right, which is nice. They've been doing that for a long time, obviously. And then various holsters and grips and speed loaders and moon clips and sights and all kind of accessories you can get for the SP-101. All right, so a couple little interesting things about Ruger, and then we will uh, go to the to the breakdown here really quick. Uh, Ruger started in 1949, and one interesting thing, their first pistol, which was called the Ruger Standard, which was chambered in 22 LR, was actually based off of the German Luger. All right, so you see, you know, kind of like with your uh, 2245, which is not not so much off the Luger, but some of the Mark series. Uh, with the exposed barrel and all of that, they kind of have like a Luger look. And that actually started their company, all right? So that one gun really set these guys off. And as of 2000 and what, 10? You know, out of the 2,288 uh, gun makers in the U.S., they were the top. They sold 15.3 million guns from 86, 1986 to 2010. Ruger pushes guns, and the reason they push out so many guns are a couple of things. American-made, lifetime warranty, and customer service that is just unmatched, and quality at that, all right? That is, that, those are the things that Ruger is known for, and they have kept that true even to, till today, which is just amazing. American-made, great customer service. Uh, and absolutely fantastic guns. The SP-101 started back in 1988, I think is when production started and was introduced in 1989. So this is nothing new, all right? There's a lot of reviews on this gun. We're just, uh, we're just adding a little bit to it, okay? So this gun has been out for a long time. I don't know how many they've sold of this, but I'm sure uh, it is tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. I, I really don't know, but I know they've sold a lot, and the company has been around for a long time. All right, let me show you how to take this grip off here really quick, and then we will take you guys to the range with us. We're going to take this grip screw out. It is not too tight. You just want to make sure you get a screwdriver that fits down in there. Take this off like that. And then you're going to pop these little grip panels out. If you have trouble doing this, you can take the uh, screwdriver I like to push this side a little bit just to kind of get an edge and like I said if that doesn't work just take a screwdriver and lightly depress this so you can get the grip panels off there's one of them and the other one don't want to point the gun at ourselves of course also don't want to mess up the grip because this gun unfortunately is going back so we can hopefully get another one from them all right so there's the grip panels off you got a disassembly tool here you don't want to lose that I'll show you that up close and then you got a little pen right there so you can knock that little pen out there's the disassembly tool try not to lose that one all right, take that out and then the rubber comes right off, all right? And you can see how thin this uh, mainspring housing really is um, compared to some others. I know Smith & Wesson, which are quite a bit wider than this, all right? But you have, you have grips and stuff that you can put on here to kind of make up for that if you don't like the thin grip profile. And then from here, further disassembly, you know, you can cock the hammer back. You actually put this little this little tool here let's cock the hammer kind of show you so when you don't cock the hammer you cannot see the bottom of the mainspring housing when you actually cock the hammer check out this area right here all right so now you've exposed that little piece of metal 
you would stick this in there like that where it doesn't fall out and then from there you let the trigger go home and then you can you know get the main spring housing out then you can get your trigger uh, or your hammer out and all that kind of stuff like I said we're not going to go through that whole process right now I just wanted to show you a little bit of the disassembly mainly the 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 inner workings of the gun here so putting it back together pretty simple take the grip sleeve and this thing is easy to lose I liked how they put it on the inside of the grip but it definitely can get away from you put your pen back through there like that and then oh boy you can tell I sucked at Legos all right <laughs> put that in there like that and that right there put your screw back in there That's it. You don't want to over tighten it. All right. So there you go. So there is main features of the Ruger SP 101. Let's take you guys to the range with us. We'll show you how it did. And then when we come back, we'll show you the trigger pros and cons and tell you if we think the SP 101 is still a viable option in 2019. We will see you guys in a minute. All right, we got the Ruger SP-101 out here today. I didn't buy that much 38 Special. I bought mostly 357 Magnum, but for the little bit that we have left, I have this loaded up with 38 Special and 357 Magnum. I'm gonna spin the cylinder, put it in there, and you'll see the difference between the 38 Special and the 357 Magnum right here on camera, just to give you an idea of what it looks like here. So let's let's try this out. The difference is significant 
um, as you can see with the recoil and everything but once you get used to it it, it is manageable um, it's not too bad but you also have a pretty small gun here small grip uh, so you know it starts to starts to you know wear out your hand a little bit over time but uh, still very manageable but a big difference overall when you're ready to fire just hold it tight hey you got it you hit it that's what i'm talking about baby good job was that <laughs> I told you. It, yeah, it is, it is very strong. Good job. All right, so here's where things started to get interesting, and this is with the shooting. And like I said in the beginning of the video, we had to teach ourselves how to shoot the revolver, a revolver, this revolver, well, you know. So used to striker fire guns, polymer frame guns, you know, we're pretty good with those now, and this is a whole different gun. So you really had, I, I, we really had to teach ourselves how to shoot this gun. All right, so let me show you the trigger, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that. Of course, we are still clear. All right, let's pull it double action first. I'm going to guess, I haven't pulled this yet, but I'm going to guess somewhere around 10 pounds maybe. Probably need to get my... 12 pounds, one ounce. Oh, I'm trying to reset it like a striker fired gun. Let's try this again. All right, try to keep my hands off of the cylinder. 11 pounds, two ounces. We got quite a bit of a jump there. Let me let me try to hold it like this. Probably not advisable. All right, 11 pounds, five ounces. All right, what about single action? Let's try that. I have a feeling it is quite a bit less than that. Oh yeah, four pounds, six ounces. Let's try one more time. Four pounds, five ounces. Two totally different guns when it comes to double and single action. Now, obviously you do want the double action. If you're going to carry this gun... Having a four pound trigger with the travel of basically nothing. Not a good recipe. All right. So you definitely want that double action. And this is the way that we shot it most of the time. You know, there was occasions where I'd shoot it in single action only first shot. And then I'd switch to double action right again. And actually you're going to see shots of my boy, my 11 year old son shooting it in single action um, I only put one round in there for him, but just to let him get a feel for this thing. And he actually handled it really well. Hit the target both times, too, at about five or six yards or so. So pretty proud of him and the work that he's doing, taking an interest in firearms. It's it's always a, a very cool thing. And, uh, you know, overall, the gun did okay. Now, Mrs. Tech shot after, <laughs> after, I think, the second time. She didn't want anything to do with this. Now... I messed up on the third and fourth trip, admittedly, because I thought we were low on 357 Magnums and we had 38 Special. Really, it was the other way around. We had no 38 Special and I bought 357 Magnum. So that's my bad. In 38 Special, she didn't mind shooting the gun at all. 357 Magnum, she tried it. She definitely tried it, but she was not a fan. All right, so there you go. I mean, this is a stout little gun in 357 Magnum. Even with the weight... You know, it's got a smaller grip on it, and you feel it when you when you shoot a, a cylinder or two back to back to back. Um, you really start to feel it in your hands. So, you know, and that's what this gun is designed for. It's designed for a a premium self defense and or hunting round. All right, so that's really the uses. CCW, maybe a backup gun, um, but can still carry. You know, people still love concealed carry in this, and 357 Magnum is definitely no slouch. It's probably, you know, ballistically and just, it, it's probably one of the best rounds out there for CCW. If you can shoot well with it, you got to be able to hit with what you're shooting at. Uh, home defense, eh, not so much. There's no, there's no option for a light or a laser here, and I don't really like that. You have to be able to identify what's going, you know, 
bang or whatever in the middle of the night. You have to do that first. Um, you could do a light under your hand and all that kind of stuff, but you need two hands <laughs> for this gun to be able to shoot it um, and have any kind of accuracy out of it, okay? So, like I said, this gun, it just took work, and I think one of the biggest things for me personally, I shot this gun the most, is just staging the trigger. You know, what I was trying to do is trying to pull it all the way through, all right? Pull it all the way through and trying to get good hits. If you stage the trigger like a single action, it becomes much easier to get your shots on target, all right? So, like I said, it was just a learning curve, just like anything, any other gun that we've done um, that's different, there's a learning curve to it, and this is no exception. All right, so what about pros and cons? Pros, the construction, and just how nice this gun is. Of course, we've showed you some up close since then, but stainless steel construction and Ruger, all American made, and, and just quality. I mean, there's no sharp edges or burrs or anything like that. The function of the gun, this one's a, sticking just a little bit, but I haven't cleaned it at all, okay? And I think we ran, I bet you we ran 300 rounds. Dude, I mean, we really, we ran quite a bit, and most of that was 357 Magnum. So, yeah, we, we ran some rounds through this gun. But, you know, the crane operation... The ejector rod, everything is really smooth on this gun, and it's really nice quality. All right, so I do love that. That single action trigger is just awesome. I mean, really, it is. I mean, there is basically no creep in that trigger, and it, it is really nice. Uh, this thing is a blast with 38 specials. It's like shooting a 9, but it's just not even fair. I mean, you don't feel 38 special in this gun. I didn't shoot any 38 special plus P. Uh, that's one thing I did not do, but we even shot some cowboy loads and 357 Magnum. And this thing is just, a, it's a challenging gun to, to shoot and to try to get well. And I still need a lot more revolver practice, admittedly. But it's just fun to take out something different to the range and try to connect shots. And, you know, it, it was just fun to shoot, man, and a challenge at that. Uh, plenty of accessories, American made. Right here in the USA, Ruger is, has always been an American company and uh, just a great company to work with, probably for or two. I don't know too much about that, but they're just an awesome company. Um, and the 357 Magnum round, if you want a good self-defense round, again, if you can handle it and shoot it well, that's not an insult to anybody, but it's just the truth, uh, 357 Magnum is hard to argue with. And then also the versatility. You know, how many guns do you know of in semi-auto or otherwise, that you can shoot two different calibers out of without any kind of changes. That's that's a good option. 357 Magnum and 38 Special, you have two caliber options straight from the factory. I don't care who you are, that's pretty cool. And then it is simple and reliable, and that's what revolvers are known for. You have a spinning cylinder. Of course, there's more that, a little more that goes into it, but it's simple, it's reliable, they go bang, and that's what you want in a good firearm in any firearm <laughs> that's what you want you want one that goes bang what about cons uh for mrs tech shot the grip is just too short for the amount of power that you have even though it is a little bit heavier um you know i think a longer wider grip would probably do her better and she'd probably enjoy it more i don't know but uh the grip is too short for the power ratio uh, for me, the grip is just a little bit too thin in here, so if this were my gun, I'd, I'd get a little bit wider of a grip, uh, you know, frame, or, mo or not a frame, but uh, a grip sleeve to put over this to have a little bit more for my hand to hold on to. Um, the front sight for me was a con. You can tell you got that serrated front sight right there. It's just a black ramp, all right? If this were me, I'd put a fiber optic on there in a heartbeat. Um, and it's heavy for, for CCW. Now this is a benefit, but it's also a con. All right. There's two sides of this coin. If you're going to carry this gun, you have a 27 ounce unloaded gun, but you only get five rounds. All right. You have five really good rounds, but they're again, only five rounds. All right. So the size to weight to capacity ratio is not good, but then again, it's a revolver. Uh, really quick before we get to closing, you guys are going to think this is ridiculous, but I wanted to show you in comparison, a gun that's similar in capacity, of course, 9 and 357 Magnum, that's really no comparison, 
But just to give you an idea of what this gun, if you're looking at something for CCW specifically, that's what we're talking about here uh, right now. Uh, the Walther PPS M2. All right. Pretty close in barrel length, overall length, all of that good stuff. Uh, width, you'll tell, obviously you have the, the cylinder of the SP-101. All right. It's going to, let me hold it down there like that. You can see the SP-101 is definitely a wider gun. And again, this isn't considering some of the lighter, thinner options uh, in revolvers. Just this specific revolver. I, you know, this is not a comparison. I just want to show you kind of where this revolver fits in the scheme of things if you're looking at CCW. See, I put my finger on the trigger right there. Not, not too good, but it is unloaded too. So, And then you can see in your grip length, doesn't matter so much in this as far as capacity, just what you have to hold on to. Again, not comparing 357 Magnum and 9mm. I'm just comparing basically where this gun fits in the scheme of things, okay? So, in closing, is the SP-101 and revolvers in general a viable option in 2019? My take on it is there are many uses even today and some advantages, which we may talk about in a separate video, to the revolver platform. No doubt about it. We've talked about them throughout this video, okay? So very many uses, you know, from hunters to sportsmen to shooters to people that just want to protect their families, all right? A lot of uses, very reliable, all that good stuff. Um, as long as you don't mind the ammo cost, the increase in weight, the decrease in capacity and taking the time to practice with this gun because somebody that's maybe inexperienced or experienced that thinks, oh yeah, 357 Magnum, no problem. I'm going to load this thing up and I'm going to start carrying it right away. I personally think that's a bad idea. You need to take time and a lot of rounds and make sure that you are good with this thing before you ever carry it. All right. That's my opinion. It is still a viable option. These things are well built. It's 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 almost like owning a piece of history, but it's a modern piece of history because they've been around forever, and uh, they are here to stay for a very long time. And uh, we can appreciate them. They're awesome. They're great pieces. They're great to look at too. They're just just really nice firearms. And I'll be honest with you, I can't wait to get more revolvers on this table to review. Because I love the challenge and everything that entails with these guns. Absolutely love it. Ruger SP-101. There are some cons in our opinion. But I think the pros definitely outweigh them here. I want to hear your opinion down in the comments below. We will see you guys on the next one. And as always, hold them down.